viewers at home, it's yet another day to learn something new. So today on biology, we'll be learning plant nutrition. Remember last time we did nutrition itself as a topic on its own. We learned two types of nutrition. We thought of autotrophism and we thought of also the phytotrophism. Now today, we are going to learn the photosynthesis as a concept on its own. Now remember last time, photosynthesis is defined as a process by which green plants manufacture their, manufacture their own food from simple inorganic substances in their environment using an excess of energy called the sunlight. Now let's look at photosynthesis as a topic and how this food is being produced. Now green plants are our environment and when they produce their food, they have a structure called the chloroplast that houses a green pigment called the chlorophyll. Now, it is this chlorophyll that traps the sun energy needed for photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis occurs in two processes. One is called a light reaction, and the second is called the dark reaction. The light reaction and dark reaction. Now, in the light reaction, this is where light is needed for photosynthesis, where in this one, light is not needed, but these two must be there before glucose is produced. Now, what happens in the light reaction? First of all, in light reaction number one, what happens number one is that the chlorophyll is energized. Here, the chlorophyll, the first thing happens is that the chlorophyll is what? Energized. Now, when the sunlight hits on a plant, the chlorophyll there traps that sun energy and is what it is, uh, it is what energized. Secondly, what happens? Using this energy, we have what we call photolysis of water. Photolysis of water. This simply means that water is broken down from this energy into hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion. Now, if left this way, this hydrogen will react back with this one to form water. So what happens? Number three, the NADH, the NADP, sorry, which is the nucleotide, nucleotinamide adenine, Phosphate will trap this hydrogen to become Na. This nicotinamide will trap this hydrogen here because if left alone, it will back water with OH to form back water. So, what happens? This one will trap the hydrogen to form Na, to form what we call the NADH, to form what we call the NADPH, which is now an electron carrier of hydrogen. Number four, what happens now, the energy left here that was not used here will now convert the ADP contained in the chlorophyll to what we call the ATP, which is now used in the dark reaction. I remember I told you photosynthesis is a process by green plants manufacture their own food in the presence of what sunlight from inorganic substances in their environment. And it occurs in two ways, in two, two ways, the light reaction and the dark reaction. Now in the light reaction, this is where light is needed for the reaction to occur. Here we have four things that happen. Number one, the chlorophyll is energized. When it traps the sun energy, it becomes energized. Two, using that energy it, it, that energizes it, it breaks down water to form hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion. Next, if this hydrogen ion is left out like this on its own, it will wrap up with this to form back water. So what happens? This coenzyme also found in the chlorophyll will now trap this hydrogen to become hydrogen dinucleotide phosphate, which I use as an electron. Carrier. Now, what happens next? That happens that the energy not used, like the energy that was captured but not used here, is will now convert this ATP to ATP, which is now used in the dark reaction. Exactly. Now, in the dark reaction, because it's dark, light is not needed at all. Just this energy is needed. So, in this dark reaction, what happens is that CO2, CO2, which is the carbon dioxide that was captured. Because when we, when, we, when we have respiration in man, we have 66H2O6 in the presence of oxygen to give you CO2, water, and energy. Remember to balance the equation in your chemistry 6 year, 6 year, 6 year, 6 year. Sorry, 6 year, 6 year, 6 year. So what happens when we, bring, when we do respiration? CO2 is given out. So this CO2 now is used by, the, by plants for the synthesis. So when the CO2 is given now, this plant will capture it, and in the presence of water, they will now form 
H2 plus 6 plus oxygen, giving up during photosynthesis. Now, this is the end product. What we have the glucose, what we have oxygen giving off, and then we'll have water and CO2 reacting. Now, we have also the sunlight here, and then we'll have the water here. So this is to say that in photosynthesis, we'll have two reactions that are caused the light reaction and the dark reaction. In the light reaction, light is needed, sunlight is really needed. So, what happens is that the chlorophyll will travel sun energy and become energized. Now, using that energy, it breaks down water into two hydrogen ion and then hydrogen ion. Now, what happens if that hydrogen ion is left out? It will react, it will react back with OH to form water. So, what happens? The NADH will now travel this hydrogen to become nitrotinamine and then in phosphate reduced. Now, what happens next is that the, the energy not utilized in this conversion will now convert ADP to ATP, which is now needed in the dark reaction. In the dark reaction, remember, light is not needed. So, what happens is that this ATP is now utilized by CO2 to further down the reaction using enzymes. Now, in that, in that dark reaction, the CO2 is now reduced to form glucose, which is now the end product of photosynthesis. So, for the for the formula for photosynthesis, we'll have CO2 reacting with water to give you 66H12O6 plus oxygen, which is now given up as the end product of photosynthesis. So, this is glucose, and this now is given up, which is, which is the one that we're now breathing during respiration. So, this is the photosynthesis, two processes, light reaction and dark reaction. Next, look at what are those, what are those, what are the importance of the synthesis? What are the importance? What is the need of the synthesis to man and also to plants? Number one is that one it produces glucose, which is which is the, it produces glucose, which is the food source for man. Now, one it produces glucose, it produces glucose, which is now stored as starch in plants and also in as sucrose in fruits. Two, it gives up oxygen. It gives up oxygen used for respiration. Two, it gives up oxygen used for respiration. Number three, three during um photosynthesis, you might told you when we breathe out, when, when we do and when we want to go respiration, we give us CO two. And if CO2 is left in the environment, it's because of what we call global warming, making the environment to be very warm. So during photosynthesis, these plants will now capture the CO2. So therefore, this photosynthesis, CO2 is removed from the environment. It's removed from the environment. It's removed from the environment. It's removed from the environment. And four, during photosynthesis, glucose is produced, which serves as energy needed for other activities in the plant. Is that, so which are, these are the, main, the four main importance of the synthesis. One, it produces glucose, which is the chest of energy for all the living organisms. Two, it gives us CO oxygen used for respiration. Three, CO2 is removed from the environment. When these big plants capture the CO2, they remove them from the environment. And four, the synthesis serves as a bedrock for other activities carried out in the plant. Very good. Now, with that, we look at when we do practical biology, probably in our next class, we look at we look at activities or things we do to show that all these things are in there for photosynthesis. Now we'll have test for starch. This will be carried out in our next class. Test for starch. We have tests to show that CO2 is near for photosynthesis. Tests to show that Oxygen is given up for photosynthesis. We have tests to show that chlorophyll is needed for synthesis, and we also have tests to show that tests to show that sunlight is needed for photosynthesis. All these tests will be carried out in our next lab. But first of all, let me hint you on the test of starch. In this one, you want to test if a plant has carbohydrate, if a plant has starch. Now, what do you do? Usually we have we can have this in two two ways. Let's like use a yam tuber or use a green plant. Now, but let's use a green plant for now. What you do first of all is you leave the green plant under the sun for hours. Why do you do this? First of all, is to let the green plant capture enough energy, enough what sunlight. You leave the plant under the sun for hours 
to do or to, to let the plant get more energy. So what you do too is to what you detach the plant. You detach the what the plant. After the sun has been left for, left for hours, left for uh, left for hours under the sun, under the sun. Why do you do this? To let the plant get enough sunlight to capture energy. Two, you detach the what the plant. Three, three. What you do next is to what you boil the plant. When I say plant, I I mean the leaf. Exactly, the leaf of a plant. Next, what you boil it? Why do you boil it to kill the cells? To kill the what? To make the cells inactive. To make the cells to stop performing any activity that the cell is what performing. Exactly. Number four, what we do now after you boil the plant for like five to ten minutes. Next, you place the boil leaf. Place the boil leaf. Place the boil leaf in ethanol. The boil leaf in ethanol. Now what you do, you don't place it, what you do, you put it inside, let's assume this is a beaker containing the ethanol, you put it inside, and then put it inside a burning water, a boiling water, sorry, you put it inside a boiling water. Why do you do this? Is to what? To decolorize the leaf, to decolorize the leaf, to make the leaf to become whitish and brickish in nature. Exactly. After you've done this, what do you do next? Is to place the leaf, to rinse, rinse the leaf. You rinse the leaf. As you, you rinse it in a warm water to remove the eternal present. Next, what you do next is to place the leaf on a white tie. It can be any, a white tie you're using in your houses. Place the leaf in a white tie and then you add iodine solution. You add iodine solution. Now, if that leaf gives, if that leaf gives you a blue-black coloration, that means that starch is present. But it gives you, it give, if it gives you blue-black, it means starch is present. But if it gives you yellowish, it means that stack is what absent. So this is the way the process is involved in testing for starch. First of all, you let you leave the leaf for hours under the sun to capture enough sunlight. Two, you detach the leaf, you cut it from that tree. Next is you boil the leaf for 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. Why do you boil it to kill all the cells? Next is that you place the boil leaf in it and why do you do this? Why do you do this to decolorize, to make the leaf become whitish in nature? And after that, you put the leaf in a, you rinse it in a warm water to do what, to remove any ethanol left on the leaf. Next, you place it on a white tie, and then next, what, you add iodine solution, which will not give you, if it gives you blue-black coloration, that means that starch is present. If it gives you yellowish, that means that starch is what, absent. Now, this experiment will be carried out thoroughly in our next class, so that you're able to see what I mean by test for starch and test for other things. So probably in our next class, we do the experiment, and we'll continue from there. Thank you so much for listening.